Hi, and welcome to the 2018 Paper 1 Ordinary Level. That's uh, Section A, but it's uh, the, the Leavester Ordinary Level, uh, Question 2, Part A. Okay. So, as usual, I say, you suggest you pause the video and just have a go yourself. And if you want to get the questions with the answers built in on the next page, just give me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. That email address should be in the description below. So question two here is now it's 15D for this part. So a lot of marks going. And you're looking at a complex numbers question. So we're given three complex numbers. So actually we're given two, sorry, Z1 and Z, Z2. And we we're asked or told that we can find Z3 by subtracting Z2 from Z1. Now be careful here, my first attempt at this, I took uh, Z1 and Z2 just by just not concentrating. Um, now we're, we need, we're asked then, I suppose the ultimate thing here is to plot Z1, Z2 and Z3 on the argon diagram here. So you see the imaginary axis, you have your real axis, and you have the grid lines built in. So let's find out what Z3 is, okay? And Z1 would be minus 2 on the real axis and plus 3i on the imaginary. Z2 would be minus 3, minus 2i. So minus 3 on the real axis and then minus 2 on the imaginary axis. So you have to take those two away. Now the answer built in the next page, must well go to it. So that's what we're asked to do to find Z3. So I've got Z1 written here. Very careful you do properly. Z2 written here. And I'm taking them away. I'm taking away both these parts. So that's why I put it in brackets. Because the minus here is going to change the sign of this and the sign of this. My first step is to simplify. Is to remove those brackets. So we have to minus 2 and plus 3i. They weren't changed. Minus by minus is a plus here. And minus by minus is a plus here. And most people that do that, they just take away the th negative 3. They don't change the sign of the negative 2i. I can go ahead and just um, group the things I want. You don't need to do that necessarily, but it may make things uh, less error prone. So that's the real parts have been added. And the imaginary parts have been added. So minus 2 plus 3 is 1. 3i plus 2i is 5i. I'm going to plot that point here. So that one was here, 1 on the real axis. It's already marked in, and 5i on the imaginary, so it'll be plotted there. Now it's important here that they say label each point clearly, that you clearly mark it and put the label on. So if you mark, I mark lost, or maybe even a drop back from 15 to 13, depending on how specific they were in the marking scheme. So that's part A. Now part B here, okay, we're asked to investigate if Z3, the, that, those bars mean the length of, so is the length of Z3, equal to the length of Z1 plus Z2. So we're asked to find the modulus three times here. We just found Z3. Now, let's say in part A you couldn't find Z3 for some reason. Just make up an answer in part A and declare it, and then that's acceptable for use in all future parts. So the formula for modulus is given here. Okay, It's basically a, a remix of Pythagoras' theorem. And you have the square root of A squared plus B squared. So we're going to do that three times. Now, I have it done out here. Might seem a bit messy in a way, but I'm just doing that's Z1, sorry, Z3 written in, Z1 written in from the question, and Z2 written in from the question. Okay, and I'm now going to find the modulus of each one of them. Okay, so I'm following the formula here. A, A is the first term, so I'm written in the form of A, plus then you have the B here, and the I part. Now, a lot of students put in the 5I. In, instead of B, instead of the B, and that's an error, okay? So it's just the numbers, so the number here, the real number, and the number in front of the I. So I get there the 1 squared plus 5 squared. The same thing here, A is minus 2, so minus 2 squared, and the 3, so 3 squared. Now you notice I'm putting the negative numbers here in brackets. So the minus 3 on the, on the third one is squared, and the minus 2 here is squared. I don't really need the brackets, but when you put them in, this, the calculator won't be able to handle them in that form. So if we put it through, okay, that's 1 squared plus 5 squared. So 1 squared is 1 plus 5 squared is 25. 1 and 25 is 26. That's where I got this. Now the minus 2 squared is plus 4. Okay, now keep that in mind. 4 plus 3 squared is 9, so 4 plus 9 is 13. And that's still square rooted. So the square root of 13. Same thing here. Minus 3 squared is 9. Plus minus 4 squared is 4, so 9 of 4 is 13. That's still square root. Now, if I add them together, that's two of them. So it's 
2 times square root of 13. Is that equal to square root of 26? No, it's not. Now, you could have went and showed the two decimal equivalents. Maybe I should, okay. I suppose I suggest you should, just to, you know, cover your proverbial. Uh, anyway, the conclusion here is that they're not equal, and that should be the job done. It's a 5D scale here, so a lot of chance to get marks. Now, part C, you're given that a fourth complex number, Z4, can be found by dividing Z1 by Z2. Okay, that line here always means the, means the divider line. It says write Z4 in the form of X plus Y. Now, that's tricky in this question, but we'll come to it later. You'd ignore this. It's just saying that X and Y are real numbers. It's just kind of mathematically covering uh, you know, the, the correct terminology. So you can kind of ignore them. Your answer often will appear in this form anyway. There is a trick that sometimes happens here that I'll go through later on. Now, I'm going to go to the answer because there's a lot going on here, okay? Now, the method for dividing complex numbers, I'll have it written here, is to divide complex numbers, you must multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the bottom. Now, that's not given to you in any way. You have to memorize that. Okay, it's just a method, like anything else. So I need to find out, well, what is this conjugate of the bottom? So the bottom term is minus 3 minus 2i. Now, the conjugate of that is, I just defined it, you just change the sign in front of the i. Okay, it's actually the complex number that's the same distance away, directly above, if you were to draw it on an argon diagram. But really, for simplicity, just you kind of learn off, and hopefully you recall, on the day that you just change the sign in front of the i. So the conjugate here of this term is minus 3 plus 2i. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by that, that, that term. Okay, so I've written that here. Then I just showing it, it was a different way of just showing it with brackets. Okay, brackets to be multiply. And I've kind of combined them as one big fraction. Don't necessarily need to do that. You could do it as rough work and bring the answer back in. I'm just going to kind of take it as I work down. So I'm moving up here now. I'm actually doing the multiplication of the top and the multiplication of the bottom. So I've written the second term out twice. First term in the first bracket, the second term in the second bracket. Uh, go left, right then is minus 2, minus 6 is plus 6. Minus 2 plus 2i is minus 4i. 3i times negative 3 is minus 9i. And lastly, 3i by 2i. Same thing as 3x by 2x is 6x squared. Okay, 3i by 2i is 6i squared. That's the top completely um, multiplied. Now, it's to be simplified, but it's multiplied. The bottom, okay, I've written out the second bracket twice. First term into first bracket. Second term in the second bracket. That's there are all the information is coming from here. Minus... 3 by minus 3 is plus 9, so that's where that comes from. Minus 3 by 2i is minus 6i. Something you'll notice here with the division of complex numbers is that the the bottom line always gets rid of the i's, okay? So we should see this negative 6i being uh, gotten rid of. We'll keep going. Minus 2i by minus 3 is plus 6i. So they're going to cancel. And then lastly, minus 2i by 2i. Minus by plus is minus. 2 by 2 is 2. i by i is i squared. Now, move on then. Next step, I'm going to simplify, and at the same time, we should have wrote it in here, I'm using the fact that i squared equals minus 1. So if i squared is minus 1, well, can't I just swap them? So the 6 is multiplying by the i squared, it'll be 6 by the minus 1 down here. And the same thing at the bottom, it's minus 4 times i squared, but i squared is negative 1, so it's minus 4 times negative 1. That's written here. At the same time, in this little part here, I've combined them together. Okay, I owe you four apples, I borrow nine more off you, and now I owe you 13 apples. And the 6i minus plus 6i have turned to zero, so they've gone away. I'm going to just get rid of some of the stuff on the... Just make it clear. So now I've just um, got to this point here. I've removed, I'm removing the brackets. Okay, I'm going very slow, step by step, just so you don't uh, lose track of what I'm doing. So the 6, the 13i don't change, the negative 13i don't change. But this 6 by minus 1, plus by minus is minus, 6 by 1 is 6. Sitting at the bottom, minus 4 by minus 1, that'll become plus, minus by minus is plus, 4 times 1 is 4. So nothing has changed just except removing the brackets. Now we can do addition here. What if we see, well, 6, take away 6, but it cancels. So we're left with negative 13 i over 13. Now, that can divide in, you get minus uh, negative 1 i. But that's not in the form of x plus y i, that'd be just in the form of y i, which is why I have to include the 0 here. That's what's ended up being tricky. Now, what often happens is you'll end up with an answer here, maybe of 13 minus 13i. 
Now, this is not this question, it's just a hypothetical other question, divided by 13. And students may leave the answer like that, but that's not in the form of x plus y i. Okay, you have to divide the 13 in. So one of the other fractions is that I can write this as two separate fractions, one being 13 divided by 13. Uh, take away 13i divided by 13. And if you do it, 13 to 13 goes, well, in this case, goes once. 13 to minus 13 goes minus 1i. would be the answer for that hypothetical scenario. And that's often the way it's asked, just to test, can you simplify it properly? Okay, this should be the end of part, uh, sorry, question two. So thank you very much, and see you on question three.